How are we all doing tonight? My name is Big Bombed Boy. And this is a hunter's guide to pre-raid best in slot. Let's do it. Alright, so first thing, let's talk about the goal of pre-raid best. We just want to get it quick and we want to be raid ready. We don't have to be necessarily the best in slot for everything to get into a raid. Obviously, I mean, people can do MC before they're level 60, can do it in greens, it's been done. But we want to get, you know, good gear so that we don't feel like we're holding the raid back. So basically, best in slot is what we want to aim for. So even if we don't get all these pieces, that's fine. You can still do raids, don't worry about it. You can start raiding and fill those in later. So briefly, let's go ahead and cover stat weights. So for Hunter, hit, then crit, then agility, down to attack power are mainly what you want to aim for. Int and even spirit are nice to haves, but you don't really want to go too far out of your way to get those. And you can always, you know, dive in a little deeper there and say, well, maybe it's worth taking this crit or that amount of hit. But generally, that's what we want to aim for. Hit over crit over agility over attack power, over everything else. And now first, let's go ahead and cover Beast Stalker. Now, Beast Stalker, it's really not that great. I mean, if you just look at the set bonuses, the only decent one is the four piece. But we can't really get four pieces together to make that one happen. I mean, if we look at the set here, I mean, the helm's okay, but there's much better helms. The shoulders, again, they're just all right. We have much better shoulders. And that's pretty much the same uh, the whole way through. The only real exception being the boots. We don't really have a lot of boots that are better than these. There's really only one. So the boots are probably the main piece you want to aim for uh, when it comes to Beast Stalker. Of course, we will get the tier 0 0.5, they call it. Um, and you'll need these for that quest line if you want to do those. But even that said, it's not really something you're going to wear. So Beast Stalker, it does kind of look cool and it looks good with my Bender Strike, um, but it's not something that we need to wear. We'll pick up a lot of these pieces going for our best in slot, but don't be too uh, worried about actually getting them and using them. All right, so we're going to go ahead and talk about helms first. We'll go from top to bottom. Now the best helm pre-raid is going to be backwood helm um it's it's excellent it really really is 21 agility 13 stamina 9 intellect 9 spirit with one crit i mean that's about uh the best stat spread you can get as a hunter and it's really easy to get it's from dm quest starts in dm west um from that ghost on the bridge and just as you go through dm which you're going to do a couple times anyway it's really really good so definitely pick that one up and you don't have to worry about drops because it's from a quest now for alternatives crown of tyranny for or tyranny i don't care from bounazar and Strathholm live really easy to get um it's not quite as good because we'd obviously rather have agility than attack power but you still get the one crit uh and you get a little bit of extra stamina but the end spirit are nice to have um also from Strathholm is the Unforgiven, uh, Mask of the Unforgiven. Uh, this one is really nice to have on hand because this one will give you two hit. So one thing that I did a lot in MC was I would keep this one in my bag and then use uh, Crown of Tyranny and go back and forth depending on the level of the enemy I was fighting. So if it's just trash, I can get by with uh, out the hit and then when we get to a boss since they're level 63, we need that extra hit put on Mask of the Unforgiven. And just for comparison, Beast Stalker's cap always drops from Gainling, of course, in Schoolman's. Compared that to Backwood Helm, and I mean, there's really no comparison. It's just, yeah, poor Beast Stalker. And then for Necklace, it's actually really easy. We just want more of a Forgering, which uh, comes from the In Dreams quest that you do from Forgering himself over in Eastern Plaguelands. Um, the quest lines are not really that hard. And you're going to do it while you're leveling up anyway. And it's pretty much going to last you until you get uh, an Ixia Tooth Pendant. Imperial Jewel from BRD. Imp drops it is decent, but it's not as good as Mark Forgering. And Forgering so easy to get anyway. You're just going to get that one. There's also one from the 
quests in Stratholme. That's similar to Imperial Jewel. But again, Mark of Forging. Easy to get. Really good. Can't ask for more. And then we come to Shoulders. So True Strike, Shoulders are going to be the best. And they're not that difficult to get. They drop from the first boss and up a Black Rock Spire. You know, a lot of people are going to do Rend runs and you're going to kill him on the way. So a lot of chances to get him. The only downside is a lot of classes want these. Um, because they're good for warriors, rogues, enhance. Uh, Rhett probably wants them as well. So you will have to roll against a lot of people, but it's easy to kill him. So you'll have a lot of chances. And I mean, the hit is really good to have in your pre-raid gear because you're unlikely to put Biznix on your blue weapon. Uh, no, nobody wants to waste that gold because you're just going to replace it with Brock Delar later. So True Strike is a really good place to get um, that hit because you're really going to need it. We do have one sort of, uh, you know, alternative, and that would be Wormhide Spalders. Um, the difference isn't huge. I mean, 24 attack power is nice to have, but Wormhide also have the hit. And like I mentioned before with... Uh, Mask of the Forgiven, you can kind of swap it out when you need the hit or don't need the hit if you end up with uh, other shoulders, like Warm Tongue shoulders from Balnazar here. These are good if you don't need the hit, um, but definitely True Strike is what we want to aim for. And then for Cape, easy. Cape of the Black Baron. And it's really good. That's a really, really good cape. We're going to use that until uh, you get the Shroud off Ragnaros really really good cape and it's not that hard to get i mean you're gonna do a lot of baron runs anyway and a really really nice stat spread on that i'm still using one right now uh not a lot of alternatives if emperor drops the emperor's new cape for you you might use that kind of as a stopgap until you get baron's cape but just go ahead and get cape of black baron it's pretty easy to farm and it's really really good all right, and now probably the one we've dreaded the most, chest piece, because we all know what's coming. Savage Gladiator Chain. Yeah, uh, everybody wants this chest. I mean, Hunters want it, Enhanced Shamans want it, Warriors want it. It's really, really good. Even with 13 strength on here and it being level 52, uh, this is by far the best we can get for pre-raid bis. Uh, there are some other decent things, but nothing really comes close to this. Uh, on the other hand, it's really a pain to farm this, so I wouldn't blame you if you didn't want to farm this. Now, Hunter can solo Arena, but even still, it's a real pain in the ass trying to get this. So, for alternatives, Cadaverous Armor is really, really easy to get. You will probably pick up Cadaverous Armor and some of the other pieces like the legs aren't bad even the boots i mean it has a little bit uh more stamina than you need but all these things are like stamina attack power except for the chest which has agility strength and attack power so that's a lot of attack power that you're getting from this chest and it's just fine uh to use for a while because yeah farming that savage gladiator chain is not fun Nightbrace Tunic from Solokar Flame Wreath and Upper Black Rock Spire, but he's kind of an optional boss, so you probably won't get this one. Um, it's probably, it's about the same as Cadaver's Armor, but you're probably not going to do too much Solokar, so uh, if you're not up to farming Savage Gladiator Chain, just stick with Cadaver's. There's also Ogre Forged Halberk. Now, Ogre Forged Halberk is really, really good. Um, it's even a little bit nicer than cadaverous armor uh it's not quite as easy to get as cadaverous armor but it's totally doable and if you can open the door and you can solo dire mall north then you'll just pick up ogre forge hallbreak doing that uh and it's quite good and thankfully after uh savage gladiator chain the bracers are actually really really easy to get um slash call bracers from lower black rock spire they drop off halcyon uh, they're really good. They give you one hit, and again, we're really going to need that hit since we don't have Biznix. And they drop a lot. I mean, Atlas Loot here says 36.19% chance to drop. So, uh, yeah, get those. They're really easy to get. If for some reason you're doing just fine on hit, I don't know why that would be, 
But if that's the case, Bracers of the Eclipse from Prince Torthildren, what, I don't know, and Darmal West, those are also really good. Nice stat spread, a lot of attack power. Definitely pick those up if you don't need to hit. And then we come to Gloves, which are also incredibly easy because they're BOE, you just buy them. And buy them at level 53, get them while you're leveling. You can use them, and I mean, they're gonna be way better than anything else you have while leveling. They're not even that expensive now. I mean, I've seen people selling the gloves and the pants as a set for way less than 100 gold. And that also brings us to legs. Now the legs are a little bit higher level at 55, but you want this two set. Uh, <laughs> this is like the only two set bonus you're gonna have for a while but it improves your chance to hit by 2%. That's a lot of hit. When you need to get to nine, getting two from just a set bonus is insane. So definitely pick up Devil's Heart gloves and leggings. It's gonna be bis for those two slots. Now, unfortunately, they do look pretty bad. There's just like fur and straps and metal rings, I don't know. And then we get to belt. Fortunately, the belt is super easy to get. I mean, Warpwood Binding drops from the first boss in Dire Mall West, and he's super easy. I mean, you can uh, probably two-man him. I think I remember doing that in vanilla, and it drops pretty often. Uh, super easy to get. Definitely pick that one up. Now, Chiselbrand Girdle from Lower Blackrock Spire is also pretty nice. Um, I used one of these in Phase 1 since Dire Mall wasn't out yet. Um, but Bannock is a rare spawn. He's the guy that drops the Arcanine Reaper plans. So if you just, I don't know, you're helping somebody farm for that or something like that, um, you might pick this up as well. And it, it is really good. But ultimately, you'll probably want to go with the Warpwood Binding. Fuck. And now we are at Boots. We've actually got quite a few options when it comes to Boots. So the best one is Mongo's Boots. Level 57 BOE. But they can be hard to find. Uh, <laughs> there's none on my auction house, and honestly, I've never seen them on the auction house here. Um, it's just not something people seem to make. You can always have somebody make them for you. Um, the mats aren't... I mean, they're not great, but they're not too bad. Six Essence of Air is a little pricey. Um, but if you just happen to have those, uh, you can go ahead and get those made for you. But another option is Beast Stalker's Boots. You're probably just going to pick these up while doing Strathholm for, like, the cape. Um, they drop pretty often, so these are probably what you're going to want to go with. Um, they're f just fine. It's probably the only piece of Beast Stalker you really end up wearing. And even if you don't get those, Shadowcraft boots are just fine. You can get those from Rattlegore and Schoolman's. So you'll probably find those uh, just running Schoolman's for the quests or something like that. Schoolman's also has Wind Reaver Grease, which are pretty damn nice. They do drop from Katronos. Now, that's the guy that you gotta summon with the blood if you're doing that quest. Um, but a lot of warriors will want Boots of Valor, which he also drops. So, there's a pretty decent chance you'll also get Wind Reaver Greaves, which are nice to have around because they are the only boots we're gonna be one to wear that have hit. So, if you still need more hit, Wind Reaver Greaves are the one to go with. Otherwise, get Mongoose for cheap enough, or just get Beast Stalk, or you're definitely going to come across those. And then Ring. Ring is actually super easy, because we just want two Tarnished Elven Rings, and they drop from Tribute in Dire Mall North. And then we come to Trinkets, which is really easy. Just get Black Hand Breath. <laughs> I mean, this thing is incredible. Two crit on a Trinket. I mean, you're going to use this pretty much forever. Uh, for Alliance, this comes from the quest to kill Dracoseth, I think. And it starts from Warm Thalak and Lower Black Rock Spire. He drops something that starts it. For the Horde, it's the one to kill Rend. Um, starts with Warlord's Command. Uh, and you're going to be running those dungeons. And just get the quest done and get Black Hand's Breath. It's incredible. For your other slot, Royal Seal of Eldritch Thalath, which is just from the book for Dire Mall. You can buy that off the auction house. Uh, I'm sure there's one on here right now, and it's not even going to be very expensive. Yeah, they're three gold. 
So just get that, go turn that shit in, get your other trinket. If you're a horde, Rune of the Guard Captain is also really, really good. If uh, you need hit, definitely swap that on over uh, Eldrathalus. Now, before we get to weapons, I just want to make a quick note of a few things that we should avoid. So, true aim gauntlets. We don't really need increased weapon skills. I mean, the one hits okay, but these are just absolutely demolished by Devil's Sword Gloves. I mean, they're just so much better than these. As a hunter, we don't really need increased weapon skill. We do gain some hit from it, which is okay, but as a hunter, we don't have to deal with glancing blows like melee does, which is the main reason you want weapon skill gains. So, don't get these, they suck. And also, rip hook here. Rip hook is just not good. We don't want a weapon, a ranged weapon, with this kind of middling speed. If you want to mess around with BM survival builds, you can go with a fast one and, and just mess around with that if you want. But generally, we want something slower. Like Black Crow here is not too bad because of the speed. It's 3.2. We want that slow weapon. So don't worry about plus weapon skills. Stay away from fast bows. And then we come to melee weapons, which is where things will get a little bit confusing. So right now in phase two, Barber's Blade is pretty much what you're going to want to go for. Um, you get one crit and you get 60 attack power. Even compared to Lock Delar, uh, Barber's Blade is better. Yes, this has two crit, but one crit isn't worth 60 attack power, although the stam and the intellect and even the increased melee damage is good, especially uh, if you can ever get in any melee attacks. Now, phase three is about to drop at the time of recording, so mainly we're going to be focusing on from then onward. So for phase three, two bone slicing hatchets is going to be very, very good. From phase three to four, you're gonna want one-handed weapons. Bone slicing hatchet is very good. You could also go for like assassination blade. It's not that expensive. These are 36 gold and it gives you one crit. So that would give you two crit. And you're probably wondering, wait, I thought you said that Lock Delar wasn't that great with its two crit. Why would I wanna go with an assassination blade? to crit and that's a good question the reason for that is because phase 3 is going to bring enchant weapon agility into the game it's expensive but you're going to use these weapons for a while so it's worth getting that enchant on there and this is going to give you 15 agility to a one hit weapon which means if you're using two assassination blades it means you're getting two crit and 30 agility that makes it quite a bit better than barbarous blade ah uh, yeah and also better than Rock Delar. Now, you're also probably wondering, wait, what about Dalrans? I thought that everybody wanted Dalrans. Dalrans is so good, and it's a set, and it looks cool. Okay, so Dalrans, it is pretty good. It, it is. Um, because you're going to get a little bit less attack power than the two bone slicing hatchets same enchant of course but you'll gain a little bit of crit so it is slightly better the two dalrins than bone slicing hatchet but the drop rate is awful atlas loot says 4.49 for the main hand and 16.34 for the off hand plus you're also gonna have to roll against warriors and rogues so, I mean, if you want to do it and you want to roll against warriors and rogues and have people not like you, feel free to do it. I don't care. I'd say just stick with the bone slicing hatchets or assassination blades if they're really cheap. But, of course, the most important part, our ranged weapon. So, there's actually quite a few options um, and they're all about the same level. You won't notice a big difference between them. First one would be Ancient Bone Bow. It's probably not the best one, but it might be the best looking one. So it gets a, a, a mention because it's still not bad. It's 2.8 speed, faster than Rock Delar, 
Um, it's a little bit faster than we want, but it's not too far. Um, and it has 11 agility, which is pretty good. So uh, that's one to keep in mind. Even better is Carapaspine Crossbow. Probably my favorite one. You get 9 stamina, 4 agility, and a 3.3 .3 speed. So it's quite nice. Uh, and you're going to do a lot of strath home. You're going to see this when you're farming your cape. And he also is the same guy that drops the boots. So that works out really nice. Rip hook is amazing. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> this thing sucks. Now, Black Crow is pretty nice. Um, you get the one hit and three agility, and it's 3.2 speed, which is good. Not as good as Carapace Spine Crossbow. Uh, the damage is a little bit lower, but if you need the hit, then Black Crow is pretty nice as well. But really, all those are kind of worthless now because you can just get Bloodseeker at level 51 by doing the Alterag Valley quest. 3.3 speed. I mean, the DPS is higher than Black Crow by a noticeable amount, and you get 7 agility, so... Hey, there you go. Just do that Alterac Valley quest and have Bloodseeker at level 51 and make those last nine levels pretty easy. Of course, I also want to mention Dwarven Hand Cannon. None on my server here, um, but the one time I did see it in auction, it was for 250 gold. Um, it's, it's pretty good, but just... Just get Bloodseeker. And I just want to mention that going into future phases from here, not a whole lot is going to change. Um, in phase 5, we will get the two-handed agility enchant. When that happens, probably make Barblade the best for pre raid piss again. Uh, but other than that, the only real change I think is we're going to see the Devil's R.I. trinket from our class quest. It's a pretty nice trinket, um, but it's not really going to replace any of your other ones either. You're just going to use it, FD and swap. Uh, but it, it is really nice to have as well. But that is going to be the end for the Hunter's Guide to Pre-Raid Best in Slot Gear. Really? But I want to hear from you. Let me know, is there any gear you thought I should have mentioned and I didn't mention? I know some people probably thinking like the Dire Maul legs, something like that. I don't know. I want to hear from you. Also, I hope you guys really enjoy the Orgrimmar theme. <laughs> I don't know why, but it just like, I test my audio settings like 10 times before I record anything. And it still just randomly got loud, I swear. But that is going to be all for now. I really appreciate you all watching this one, and I will see you all for the next one. Get out of the shot.